Live from Palo Alto, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering I.O. Brought to you by I.O. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE presentation live at the Rosewood in Menlo Park and here in California, in Silicon, heart of Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. This is the CUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We're part of the IO Data Center's IO Conversations uh, Thought Leadership event here in Silicon Valley. Talking about data center as a platform. Our next guests are Suzanne Cass from Baselayer, and Peter Gross from Bloom Energy. Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So, Thank you. data center's a platform is all about the cloud. And the cloud is just a data center that no one knows the address of, so we still have to do all the innovations. Uh, Suzanne, what's the, what's the main innovation happening? Because facilities are still going to be needed, but yet the energy piece of it, the, the costs are still going to be there. What are the current innovations that you see? Well, the newest innovation, and I'm actually passionate about, John, is actually focusing more on energy savings. Uh, and growing sustainably. I fundamentally believe the cleanest unit of energy is the one that you actually don't waste while you actually still have to do cloud computing at the growing astounding speed sustainably. Is there any new trends that you see uh, happening that are indicative of the cloud movement where people are actually looking at data centers differently? I mean, it used to be a sprawl kind of mentality. Now you're seeing engineering specifically going into it. What are you seeing there, big trends? One of the key big trends I've asked you to observe is actually the growth of the edge computing. So the mega data center will continue to grow as I actually work at eBay for a long time ago, citing many of them around the world. Um, but the growth is actually because of the driven of the devices in a smart city, so it's going to be at the edge. Peter, how about you? You're seeing uh, trends, obviously, in the energy side as well. What are you seeing? What are your thoughts? Um, as most of you know, um, the data center industry is very risk averse. Uh, for the longest time, uh, um, innovation was coming uh, uh, slowly. Um, until about five, six years ago, with the advent of uh, hyperscale data centers, uh, uh, different reliability expectation, different uh, conditions uh, enable these companies, uh, um, whether it's Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, uh, to, uh, to bring some very interesting new concepts, new technologies that uh, had an enormous impact, not only in terms of energy efficiency, but also energy utilization, and other elements that uh, are part of the, the whole su sustainability picture. Um, since then, uh, um, other companies, enterprises, and co-location companies have embraced some of these technologies, and uh, now we're seeing some uh, a real uh, transformation, um, not only in terms of power, but also cooling, uh, security, physical, physical uh, logistics associated with data centers. Uh, it's it's a it's a brave new world, and uh, um, the energy components, power components, uh, plays a major role here because it's such an important, expensive, uh, and the major component of the physical reliability of the, the data center. Now, historically when we think about a data center, we think about raised floor, we think about large, dedicated space, servers over here, storage over there, a bunch of network stuff. It's all being hyper-converged into a series of racks. But I want to come back to the point that you made, Suzanne, about the edge. That what we're, because of physics, while we will continue to see these very large data centers, we will increasingly see what we're starting to call edge centers. The ability to put significant amounts of processing power close to where the sensors are, where the controls are, because the speed of light will not allow for round trip of more than a few milliseconds. So that's where energy and the things that you do really become crucial to the design question. So can we talk about what it means or how you envision folks starting to design these edge centers, especially in the context of energy consumption? Precisely. Actually, I love the way that how you designed it because you speak like a data center designer <laughs> as a PhD. Uh, indeed, actually, very well stated and you keep it very simple. The only one thing I would actually uh, 
build on your ideas, actually make it smart. So the smartness of it, it go by some of the technology that Baselay have done, it's actually inventor of that, is we don't need a building. Uh, we provide dual source, so you can actually toggle between the grid power and also uh, additional capacity, such as uh, Peter's company, Bloom, and others such as the energy storage system. And uh, space is absolutely very important. That's underlined about the way that actually how you describe it. So one of the unique things that actually I'm personally involved with is actually welcoming many utility attending our conference today. Um, they're all attending from the California utility and also some of them come as far as the East Coast in New York ISO. Um, specifically, it's actually placing a module instead of a build, building a building, have dual feed, uh, be able to consume separate feeder and power right on the transmission substation. Uh, we have many clients around the world, including some of them actually attending today, like Goldman Sachs, take full advantage of that, and they have never have any downtime. It's actually improved the reliability compared to the race floor and saving hundreds and hundreds of millions of uh, dollar. And one of the unique innovation actually, I'm leading on that part, coming out from the renewable background, is actually have that right on the generation of um, clean power. Now, Peter, uh, Bloom Energy came out with significant fanfare uh, about eight, nine years ago, as I recall. Uh, uh, fuel cell based, but very, very large capacity. How is Bloom Energy fitting into this vision of dual capacity, dual uh, connection, uh, as a way of driving energy uh, or energy management needs? Um, <clears throat> the the concept of distributed generation, on-site generation, is uh, gaining ground rapidly, and for a it's a whole slew of reasons, uh, of which uh, the reliability of the grid is a uh, significant factor. Uh, just just uh, in terms of uh, uh, numbers, uh, the number of uh, of utility events failures have grown at the rate of about 10% a year for the last 10 years or so. Just last year, there were over 3,600 events averaging about 44 minutes of downtime. So there is a significant concern in the entire community about, about power resiliency. And uh, the, the, the focus is on many enterprises to have some, some control over one's power destiny. So and then if you take into account the fact that when it comes to data center and any kind of mission critical facility, there is no real sustainable on-site generation solution. Uh, when, you, when you look about, when you talk about the, um, um, sustainable green power, you primarily uh, think of uh, either wind or solar. Geothermal is, might be a factor, but uh, they don't they don't satisfy the basic requirements of continuous availability, which is essential in the operation of a data center, right? Uh, and that's where Bloom comes into the picture. Uh, the, the ability to deliver much cleaner power with a much lower carbon content, but uh, a solution that is uninterruptible, continuous, a solution that could uh, very well replace the traditional components of a data center, UPSs, batteries, generators, uh, uh, transfer switches, a lot of uh, auxiliary components. Uh, simplifying the architecture, reducing cost, improving the reliability, and, and finally having this green sustainability element has dramatically changed the whole the, the whole uh, green green power solution for for data centers. Interesting topic, and Peter, we certainly put this on our, our agenda for our Cube Friday podcast that we're going to do Friday because this really is a, such a cutting edge trend, but it's got implications and impact to uh, the industry. And I want to get your both thoughts on this, Suzanne, Peter, on the cultural impact of two industries colliding because you mentioned some of these cutting edge uh, power, you know, the utilities. 
the grid, the smart grid's been around, I mean, it's been trying for years, decades to get that smart grid going, but now the IT culture, the raised floor meets uh, these two industries. Can you share some insight into what is the culture clash, if any, what are the, the what's the good, bad, and ugly around the that integration? Because you have two sets coming together, and certainly IoT, Internet of Things, is right around the corner, so that's happening at the meet. So what does the culture clash look like? Is it good? Has it going well? Can you share any insight? Um, sure. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, um, uh, data centers operators had a difficult time accepting uh, all, all this new technology, but things have changed. And probably I would certainly not underestimate the importance of OCP. Open compute project uh, will fundamentally, in my opinion, change this industry. It's uh, it's all about uh, the this whole industry got to the point where it's really mature enough to talk about becoming a commodity. And I, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, uh, to minimize the, the significance of, uh, of these new elements since uh, um, it's all about industrializing, standardizing this, uh, uh, this, this whole business where to drive costs and cloud has a lot to do with it. Uh, uh, Internet of Things has a lot to do with that. And the, the concept of OCP is exactly this focus. The main focus is cost reduction, energy, energy efficiency improvement. And uh, it's going to uh, 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 tremendously transform the way uh, the way we build and operate the data centers. And it started uh, with Facebook, now Google, uh, Google uh, joined. Uh, um, a lot of open know, source software involved big, in that. It's a great initiative. Everybody's great. there. Uh, the B of A made an announcement about embracing these. So it's, it's uh, happening in your it's, mind. It's happening and it's going to change uh, change this industry. And the power and, uh, and energy element uh, having to do with that, it's it's fundamental. Uh, that's, uh, that's probably one of the the single most uh, uh, critical elements of, uh, of these new companies. Yeah, energy is, uh, data centers are driving a lot of the net new energy consumption. It's a big issue. All right. Indeed. Thanks so much for sharing your insights here on theCUBE. Appreciate it. I know you got to go to your panel. We're here live at the Rosewood in the heart of Silicon Valley, right down the street from all the venture capitalists here on Sand Hill Road. This is theCUBE. We're wrapping more live coverage from IO Conversations, the IO platform, data centers and platform event here at the Rosewood. We'll be right back. John.